won't you come and join me please? I am going to be interviewing Hyla Crane, the Executive Director for the Marco Island Center for the Arts. Hyla will be uh, fabulous to interview. She's been the Director of the um, Art Center for eight years. Uh, she's a wonderful gal and uh, so come on and listen along and uh, we're going to have fun with this one. Here we go. Hi, welcome to Inside the Studio. I'm here today with Hyla Crane, Executive Director of the Marco Island Center for the Arts in Marco Island. So Hyla, it's so great to be here with you today. Joanne, it is such a treat to be able to have a chance to speak with you. Exactly. And, uh, and we've, we've formed a wonderful, warm camaraderie over the years. And um, so here we are. I've long wanted to do this with you. And uh, here we are. So Hyla, you are an arts advocate. You're an arts administrator. Um, you wear many hats, certainly, with this facility. And you wear them well. You wear them with grace and with elegance, with humor, with zest, and with glamour. Well, thank you. I truly appreciate that. I, I'm not sure every day encompasses all of those things, but I always do try. Pretty darn close. Um, and you certainly are well loved and supported uh, on this island with, with your endeavors and your fingerprints all over the island in terms of what you do and the impact that you've made, right? I think so. I believe the arts and this particular art center really serves as a community asset. We are here supporting all of our stakeholders, whether they are artists, whether they are teaching artists, whether they are students, either adult or young students, whether they are the artists whose work is on our wall, patrons, volunteers, you name it. We are here to bring something special and something satisfying to each and every one of them. And that you do well. Um, it is a hub of activity most of the time around here. So you have a play guild, or you teach, um, you bring in um, people to do drawing classes. What else goes on in here, Hyla? Well, I always think of the Art Center in sort of four major blocks. You have your exhibition space, and those we are right now in our La Petite Gallery, which enables artists to have one-person shows to build the resume. We also use this space for our local middle school, our local high school, to give them opportunities as well. These are smaller exhibitions, but nonetheless, people fight to get the wall space, and we're very proud of the work that we bring in. We of course have our larger galleries, our Lauritsen and our Rush galleries, and the shows in there are curated um, with a committee. We work on it together and we try and create a balance of shows that promote our area artists and what you might see here in Florida, along with artists who might not as opportunities present themselves. We've had the good fortune to bring in a team of Brazilian artists back in 2016 working with ArtServe over in Fort Lauderdale. Just, of course, it fell during the pandemic, but we were able to work with an artist agent out of Miami and we were supposed to have seven, but we brought in five Cuban-born artists whose work was extraordinary in that it was reflective of both their aesthetic and had an underlying message of what it is to come from one place and to assimilate into another. That work wasn't exactly um, what you might see here, but we like to do both, and that's what goes on in our galleries. We also have an incredibly robust adult education program offering, at this point, probably over 150 classes and workshops for our adult students. As you said, an amazing clay program that has expanded exponentially since I got here eight years ago. There were probably 15 clay artists working in 2014. We now have close to 80, and we could triple that space just to accommodate the remarkable work that they do. But we also have classes in drawing, painting, and that includes watercolor, acrylic, um, oil painting. We're bringing in new um, different specialty classes, whether it's layered imagery, collage, whether it's jewelry making, glass, um, trying to think of some of the other ones. We've been adding new ones along the way. Quilling, uh, all sorts of things that we'll wonderful. do. It's great, it's really wonderful. And along with our adult program, we also have 
our children's program. Right. And you know that that is near and dear to my heart. Yes. I feel like you cannot serve your community unless you serve everybody from age five to age 95. And in our children's program, some of our mainstays are our Young Arts Academy, which offers eight weeks of free art workshops to middle and high school students on Saturday afternoons in October and November. And they finish off with a art show where they can get cash prizes. So beautiful. And then of course we're getting ready. We have our summer children's art program and we made the bold move to seek funding so that that program would be free to any child who wanted to attend. We did not want cost to be a barrier. We did not want parents to have to choose between one child getting the opportunity or the other. And it was our first summer last year. We are already receiving many, many generous donations to ensure that we can have an even better summer, serve more children. And another new component in our children's programming is our art supply distribution. Mm. Now we are working in concert with the Mobile Food Pantry here on Marco Island. We, they have been an advisor. I, I had the good fortune that the, one of the people who, the person who's in charge of that happens to be the wife of my board president. So that it was helps. easily accessible and I began volunteering and what I saw was a stone's throw off Marco Island, which is fairly affluent, was destitution that you could not believe. Um, going to homes that the circumstances just were were terrible and seeing these children who while they had they were so sweet and so joyful had nothing literally nothing so we piloted last year both in I want to say last August and then again in, in February where we raised what we had money that we could put together and we created art bags which had instructions for projects Fabulous. crayons Fabulous. markers paints mm -hmm. clay all sorts of different things um, and put them together and went out through that distribution network. And we are hoping, well, we served 100 before, we're hoping to serve 500 now. And I hope you do. So you're doing a lot. We are doing a lot because my feeling always is you can look at art through many, many lenses. And people who say, I'm not an artist. If I walk into a room of kindergartners, every hand goes up. Everybody's an artist because they're not judging themselves. Adults, we begin to judge ourselves, we look at what other people do, and we say, oh, I'm not that good. But you're wrong, because we all have an innate creativity. We do, the need and, to create. And here at the Art Center, we really try and enable people to find that in themselves. Wow, you, you make me tired just listening to all the things that go on, Hyla. Um, however, um, at, uh, uh, your earlier career was much different than what you're doing right now. So you did start out in law mm -hmm. um, and you made the transition to the arts. So when did that happen? How and why? Mm, well, yes, I was a lawyer. I started out doing transactional real estate work, moved into commercial litigation as the economy changed. If you can put a deal together, you can bust it apart. Um, ended my career at um, Aetna in-house, reviewing commercial foreclosure and loan modification deals. And then I went home to be a stay-at-home mom. Ah. And I do have two beautiful daughters okay. who I love. Okay, okay. Although I didn't really fancy being a lawyer. I could do it. Mm -hmm. I could do it more than passably well, but I just, it felt like I was mm -hmm. wearing the wrong clothes. Mm -hmm really right. felt like I was wearing the wrong clothes. <laughs> those, those pinstripe suits get really old quickly. And you're wearing the right clothes now. This is much more me. <laughs> but um, I was home and I also discovered I'm, I'm not really much of a the housewife thing. I don't decorate, I don't recreate. I, I loved my kids, but as fate would have it, my tennis partner's husband was an actor. He approached me one day on a picnic bench at the club and said, I have a vision of free Shakespeare in the parks of New Haven. This is awesome. New Haven, Connecticut, home awesome. of Yale University. Yeah. And I didn't know why he was talking to me, but fast forward ahead and I became the first executive director of the Elm Shakespeare Company, which is still in existence in New Haven, doing free Shakespeare in the parks of New Haven, Edgerton Park, as well as doing really remarkable education and outreach programming. In fact, a tasty little tidbit here is that one of the people who followed me happened to be a young man that I knew, he was one of my daughter's friends named Dan Fitzmaurice, 
who then went on to uh, the Arts Council in New Haven and has now been tapped by American for the Arts. Wow. <laughs> so you just never know where the world is going to uh, take you. But no, I spent pretty much the majority of my non-for-profit career working in professional non-for-profit theaters. And you do you did have some big players in your corner um, in, in, in your theater days. Can you tell us who they were? Well, I worked for some, after, well, M Elf Shakespeare was my heart and my passion and it all starts there. I had the great good fortune to work at Long Wharf Theatre in New Haven, which has sent numerous shows to Broadway, as well as the Yale Repertory Theatre. And then I was tapped and hired by a woman named Joanne Woodward to be her director of education when she was the artistic director at the Westport Country Playhouse during an enormous capital campaign. So I was very grateful to have the opportunity to work with Joanne. I learned so much from her. Um, she was such a powerful influence on me in terms of how I saw working in the arts, the importance of the arts, the importance of arts to children for children. And it was also pretty cool getting to meet her husband because Paul Newman really is that cute. <laughs> that ain't too shabby, Hyla. No, it wasn't. Again, but you know, that was the great thing though about working in theater. You, you've got to meet people, but what you really learned is that they were people who loved the arts and Amen. amazing people and tremendous opportunities. And every day I feel blessed that I've had this, uh, what a long, strange trip it's been. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes those long, strange trips are the best, I must say. Um, what's the spark plug, Hyla, um, to keep the fuel in your tank uh, to keep you coming here every day? Wow. I think there's always something new. I think there are always new challenges. Um, there are things we have to do, but there are a lot of things we can decide to do. We, my board is remarkably supportive, my staff is my A-team, and we can sometimes think outside of the box, we often think outside of the box, and continue to come up with new ideas, new projects, new partnerships, very important to me, our ability to work with others is key. And I think that that is what makes each day um, interesting. Oh, for sure. It's the, it, 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 is the, it is the versatility in the job, I'm sure, right? Mm-hmm. No, no, no two days are alike. No two days are alike. Trust me, no two <laughs> days. And when you say I wear many hats, I really do. I know you do. And you wear them well, Hyla. Um, in 2021, you received a beautiful and meaningful award from this community and you were named the Artist of the Year. Why was this award so meaningful to you? Well, first off, it was quite a surprise um, in that um, while I quietly at home with nobody seeing me, I have painted, I can paint, I don't generally show people my work. Um, and I really thought of that award going to practicing artists, whether they were painters or writers or theatrical artists. And I've been at those ceremonies. This was Marco Island Foundation for right. the Arts that makes right. this award. But I was to discover that um, my former board chair, who had been my best friend, uh, who passed suddenly and tragically in 2019, had actually submitted an application nominating me and insisting that there is an art to art advocacy. There is an art for those of us in administration who support the arts. Um, and it turned out some other people nominated me with the same idea in mind and um, the award was given to me. And I was incredibly surprised, so much so that they arrived in the gallery, were all set up, they brought me in and I thought I was so overtired, I had forgotten a meeting and I had no idea what I was supposed to say to these people. <laughs> True story. Uh, uh, I looked, I saw my husband, I couldn't figure out, but um, it was a real honor. And uh, of, course, of course, we we are a small community, so a community together. So those artists are involved here at the Art Center. I've been a member at Markham Island Foundation for the Arts. We, we all need to support each other. We need to work together, but it was thrilling, and I keep it proudly in my office. Oh, it was a special and, and very appropriate title, I must say. Um, working in the arts, of course, does have its challenges, and, and you would be the last person that I would have to talk to that about. But um, 
What do you think has formed your underlying success in this area to continue this art center to remain vibrant and push forward into the years ahead? I think when I got here, Marco is a very uh, laid back place, um, a very traditional place, and sometimes a place that change isn't always as welcomed as it might be someplace else. I think that circumstances, and I've been here eight years in the course of which we have gone through a hurricane, Hurricane Irma landing on the island, and then of course a pandemic that took over for two years. So it's been unusual times being here, so I'm not gonna lie, to but the least. I will say it has been the ability to change and evolve. It has been the ability to take risks some of which pan out, some of which it's don't. Okay. But I know that that is what attributed to growth. Uh, right before the pandemic, we had the largest membership we had ever had. Um, as I sit with you here today, our member show in our gallery is the largest in the history of this 52-year-old organization. Wow. 61 wow. artists, 110 wow. pieces. So big, we had to take it out in, out of the gallery and into our atrium, our lobby. Um, a lot awesome. of new people are moving here, and I think you need to listen to your community to make sure that you are giving them what they want, not just putting something out there and saying, take it. We always want to feel what is going to engage people and what they are looking for. For sure, absolutely. Um, you have an incredible big heart for the arts, um, and, and I know, again, that that's a bit of an understatement. But I can imagine you've had many proud moments working with artists and people um, that you have encountered. Can you share a particularly heartwarming story during your tenure here? Oh, there's so many. I know, I know, it's a tough question. It is a tough question. Um, I'm going to address something that was recent. I, there, there are, there are so many, sure. I can barely, you know, with each I'm success. Sure. But there is one recently that really touched me. We do our programming for children and youth. And there have been a lot of kids who have, I mean, I feel like I've watched <laughs> an entire tribe grow up. up. <laughs> um, and there was a young woman who I think had been in our Young Arts Academy back in mm, 2016, maybe. She's a young woman now living in the community. And I had run into her mother who told me that this young woman was around and I was looking for art teachers. I was looking for instructors for my children's summer program. And she came and she interviewed. She is working um, as an emerging artist, somebody who is selling some of her work, but also working another job to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. But we developed a curriculum and she will be teaching classes this summer to five to eight year olds. And when she came out of her interview, she was talking to my business manager who welcomed her aboard and this young woman said, this is my dream. You've made my dream come true. I was so grateful for what I got here at the Marco Weiland oh. Center for the Arts and now I get to play it back and take my talents and my gifts and share them with oh. youngsters. So I was really, really proud of that moment to think that we can keep mm -hmm. that circle going. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm sure there have been many stories like that, Hira. I, I will tell you that we work with so many incredible artists at so many, you know, a lot of my emerging, art, emerging artists can be 75 years old. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be people in their 20s. Mm -hmm. A lot of people come to Marco. This is a place where a lot of people retire. Mm -hmm. And even if they were an engineer or, you know, a doctor or a salesperson in their earlier lives, they may have always known that art was important to them and this is where they find their place, they find a community to work with, they, they're they able to build their self-esteem. Scratch self the itch. Well, you know, it builds self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And at this age also, it's important in terms of concentration, what it does to improve people's cognitive mm -hmm. abilities. Mm -hmm. I really feel that people sometimes don't appreciate just how much a service we are offering oh. to those who are here with us. Um, and we are quite serious when we say that when people come here, 
they really become part of our art family. Mm -hmm. We don't say that lightly, we say that with all of our heart and we mean it when we say that we are working every day, that we strive to make Marco Island Center for the Arts an art home for all of our people. All roads lead to the Marco Island Center. It all starts at the Center for the Arts. <laughs> Uh, talk for a moment about the space capsule sitting outside, would you, Hyla? Sure. Um, again, there were a lot of projects that were developed to celebrate our 50th anniversary. The space time capsule was the uh, brainchild of my board president, Jim Richards. Mm. As we look to 50 years, what would the world look like in 2070? And he really thought about sort of how do we project into the future it was blasting off into space and what he it. saw was this giant space capsule and actually our space capsule which we put our time capsule in we'll be putting it in is a replica of the friendship seven and it is about 500 pounds of, stain of stainless steel that was hand painted it will not go underground like another time capsule this is a permanent art installation for us here at the art center and we have now spent two years collecting video, items, writing. My favorite uh, for our children's summer classes, all of the children created art showing what they thought the world would look like in 50 years. <laughs> We're gonna be underwater, no, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not either. But, um, so we will be getting ready to seal it probably during the summer. Um, it, it's a very, very, very cool item, and then we'll look for its permanent place with us. It, it has moved from a couple of different places here in the Art Center. Um, it was a great gift for our board president to put in place here, um, and we hope I, that for those who are here to open it in 2070, that they have that it's a very entertaining time for them. <laughs> I'm sure it will be. But and besides, it's so aesthetically beautiful. Thank you. It's an it's an eye catcher to uh, certainly everybody that wanders by. Right? Well, it's certainly one of those photo ops. Hashtag Marco Island Center for the Arts Space Time Capsule. Take it's, your picture, post it. It's awesome. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I'm hearing lots of things about how hard you work here and all the projects that you're uh, invested with and so on. Um, however, um, you, you do presumably have an off switch on the button of Hyla Crane. What do you do in your downtime, Hyla? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> Do you, do you watch movies? Are you a big movie? I'm a big reader. You? I'm a big, big reader. I read a lot. And actually, um, while I'm not much of an athlete, I, I am married to somebody who is very athletic. One thing that I am going to do that is for me, I started last fall and then sort of took a break during the winter when season is at its busiest, is I danced for years and years and years. So I'm going to be taking dance class, hopefully come the spring and summer into That's the right. early fall. You don't take a job like this to think of it as a job. It has to be a passion. You have to commit and want to do it in a way that isn't the same as punching a time clock. Agreed. And it's not that I don't want to spend, I mean, I love to spend time with my family. I love to sit and do absolutely nothing but be still sometimes because we do run around so much. Um, but this job does take up quite a bit of my life, my days, my hours, my minutes. It's hard for busy people to, uh, to ever turn it off, mm -hmm. right? It is, and it's not just being here. Part of bringing more and more people in requires you, as a leader, to be out and out and out. Absolutely. Um, and it's sometimes hard for my husband to understand that all of the things that I'm going to um, even if they're not directly Marco Island Center for the Arts things, they are a part of introducing the larger community to this art centers. Well, um, there, I, I would hazard to say there's probably not a person on Marco Island that doesn't know who you are. <laughs> they've either seen you in person, they've, uh, they've heard you speak, they've uh, seen you in print or whatever, so um, you are everywhere. Um, can you imagine yourself in any other profession, and if so, what would it be? Yes, I can actually. Um, I know it's a strange question and I don't know that I will ever move into that, but I'm really passionate about early childhood literacy. Mm -hmm. um, 
We actually are doing an exhibition in the lot, this small gallery mm -hmm. where we've asked preschoolers to create artwork based on their favorite stories because art is a real precursor to learning language, to words, to what are those first steps in being able to read and write. It's really important to me. You can't learn if you can't read and write. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm a literacy buddy every year. I, I have a child every year that I send books to and write to. I wish I could do more. And I think if we don't get kids off on the right foot, if that the education doesn't start right at the beginning and that along with really building good social and emotional skills, that's where we develop the problems later on down the line that we have to fix. So, yeah, I, I think if I weren't working in the world of arts, for all that I can't really imagine anything else, I probably would be working with children mm -hmm. well, in that way. You, you kind of have, in many respects, all of your, all of your, you know, your past, your the theater people. You are here. You're still able to touch children's lives here in a very mm -hmm. meaningful way. Oh, it's why we continue, and even, you know, we've added things into our summer curriculum. Where one of our big programs is our Playmakers Lab, uh, and that's about playwriting. So language and literacy, very important. Not to say that, you know, artwork doesn't need language to speak to you. The work is there and you're gonna respond in a visual, visceral way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I'm a big reader. I like words. That's interesting. So um, what's next? Can you talk about what's next for the Marco Island Center for the Arts? Well, the one thing that is readily apparent to anybody who knows us has been involved over the next last couple of years. As I mentioned before, our clay studio, we have more artists than we can almost accommodate in the space. And it's not just a classroom space, it is a communal space where people come in to work. We saw an exhibition that we couldn't contain within our gallery space. We are doing a lot of programs, the music, doing performance, doing speaker series, and yet we're cannibalizing the gallery space to do it. Mm. Um, I have uh oh fundraising campaign. <laughs> I believe this building, Marco Island Center for the Arts was incorporated in 1970, and they were able to put together a building that was really just where the gallery is today. And it was through the efforts of tremendous volunteers, board members, who had a vision for what the art center could be, that they were constantly throwing parties, fundraising, and then adding on to the building, here, here, here. Um, I think the time is now to take what has become a beautiful and somewhat iconic building. It is. But expand it and modernize it so that it can do more for the people here on Marco and beyond so it can serve people better. So I think that probably in the not too distant future, we will be looking at some strategic planning and looking at ways to organize so that we can meet that kind of a goal. Wow, if you weren't tired before, you'll be tired after that. Endeavor. You have no idea. <laughs> I, I, I would simply say, Joanne, that there are always things, I, I call it the parking lot, there are always things that are in the parking lot that are getting ready to uh, queue up to come in and become a part of our programming. So you stay tuned. I, I, I know we you will. and I will be in touch because we will. I can't say anything now. We have, we have another potentially big surprise up our sleeves. So. Awesome. Awesome. We'll look forward to that. So thank you, Hyla. It's been a sincere pleasure to uh, spend time with you. You are glamorous and articulate as always. And um, I wish you continued success here. Um, I know that it will be successful under your direction. And um, I do wish you every success in the, in the years ahead. Well, Joanne, thank you so much. You know that you, who has been involved here, um, is a very dear member of our Art Center family. And we look forward to you coming down from the cold every year to what we hope is one of your art homes. It is my art home. It, it most definitely is my art home, Hyla. So. Thank you ever so much. Thank you.